Hi, welcome back you illegitimate SOLIDWORKS owners. This is Ryan and this is the ultimate tutorial for assembly. From beginner up to Chuck Norris by SOLIDWORKS Tutorials. Assembly, assembly, assembly. Do, 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 do. SOLIDWORKS assembly. Now if you don't mind, open up your cracked version of SOLIDWORKS which you probably downloaded via torrent. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course you purchased your license legally and paid $8,000. Before we do anything, I have created the parts that I'm going to use in this video and the download link is in the description below. So get your ass over there and download them first so we can get it over with together. Assuming you paused the video and did so, let's finally begin. This is the zero knowledge of assembly, so just so you know, this is the assembly, okay? So on the left part, the property managers is waiting for you to choose the part. So you can do that by clicking on this browse over here. Let's just do that and bring our case by double clicking on it. But before I click anywhere on this field, before, because once I do that, that part would be fixed on that point and that point wouldn't necessarily be the right zero point of the assembly section. You don't want to do that. No, you just want to go ahead and click on this. Okay. But before I do that, let's just show you something. If this part is not appearing at the end of your mouse, it's probably beca probably because this graphics preview is not checked. Don't worry about it though. You can click OK. That would be there still, but you can click on graphics preview. That's even better. So as I said, this part will be fixed here. It means you cannot drag or rotate the part, and you can confirm that by seeing this F here. It doesn't mean the file, but it means fixed. However, you can let go of that by right clicking on the part and click on float that always happens to the first part that you insert now as the total beginner do not worry or do not be overwhelmed with all these options over here your two best friends are these two insert component and the might might you know you insert the component here and you connect them together as easy as that so let's just go ahead and insert the very same component uh, again, you can either go ahead and click on insert component and repeat the same procedure and blah 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 Or you can take it up a notch by holding the control key down and drag the part Let go of the mouse key and let go of the control key Boom! So you have two of them. Let's go to mate and see what we have there We have three categories standard mates, advanced mates and mechanical mates each with its own options Starting with the standard mate You get some options on the left and depending on the future two references that you're about to choose from each part one you will be left with some options that you can choose on those two references so for example if I choose this circular edge or surface and this flat surface over here tangent log and distance will be my only options because I cannot make these two references parallel for example so I don't want to do that or, or let's just go ahead with it okay so this is tangential and I get the same options over here by the way the only activated options that I have here um, notice there is another extra option here it's called flip mate alignment and you have it here as mate alignment align or anti-align it means you can have the two possible positioning of these two uh, references with the tangent mate or you can set a distance between them or you can lock them together lock means whatever these two are uh, positioned like however in compared to each other they will be locked to that position but i'm gonna explain more about lock later on in the ball bearing assembly i'm not gonna click okay i'm just gonna click on uh this not okay so let's just click on mate and click on this surface and this surface so we'll get more options coincident parallel perpendicular Lock, I told you, or distance, you can set the distance between these two references, you can change it, like boom, and you can angle them, that's also okay, you can you see what a height works. Let's just go ahead and click on coincident, and accept it. So, it doesn't mean these two are locked to each other, you still can drag or even rotate this part as long as it's on the same surface, you see what happens? So. This is the very basic idea of the assembly, okay? So you insert component and let's just do it another one like uh, main shaft and you see I don't see it. Why? Because I did not click on this graphic preview. I just, oh, I click on okay. It means it's now fixed. Oh, it's a good point. 
you don't want your future parts after the first one to be fixed so you don't want to do that right click on the part and click on float boom it's free again so I can oh did I show you how to drag the part yeah I just use the left mouse click and drag the part and guess what if I use the right mouse click and drag it boom it rotates you can rotate the part with the right click and you can drag the part with the left click how cool is that huh so let's just click on that and click on mate and click on the surface and right click is okay if you want to work faster so that was the basic idea of assembly let's just move ahead and start the second part I just opened the new assembly document where I'm going to assemble my bearing and save it there and later on insert it as a sub assembly into my main project. So let's just do that by clicking on insert components, holding the control key down and choose uh, if this menu is not popping up in your SOLIDWORKS, it means you're using an older version. So you have to just click on browse and then you'll be here, right? So hold the control key down, choose ball, lower bearing and the other shell. Click on open and you have to click three times and there you go. Since the ball was the first part that got created, I mean the first part that you inserted into the assembly is going to be fixed with that F symbol, right? You have to click, right click on it and click float because we don't want the ball to be fixed. We want to drag our balls around, right? So the, f the part that needs to be fixed is the outer shell, but not just anywhere. It has to be fixed on the origins of the assembly document you can find it if you go to the visibility here and uh, activate the or make the origins visible you have four of them one for each part and one for the assembly so all you have to do in order to, to fix this part in the right position is to make this point and this point coincident you can do that by choosing it click on mate and click this point and click ok so that would be for the older versions of SOLIDWORKS. Just do that if you have it. If you are working with 2017, you can do it easier by clicking on it, hold the control key, click on this one, and choose the possible mates that pop up here. Choose coincident, and that would be it. Now, please, please make sure to make these origins disappear again because it really doesn't look good. So, I want this lower bearing, is it, to be concentric with this one. I do that the original way, like traditional. Click on mate, click on the surface, and this surface. Why this surface? Because they are both cylindrical or circular, so you can use the concentric version, and click OK. Now choose this surface, and this surface, and click OK. I just right click as OK, you can do that. So now drag your ball here, and click on it, and click on the surface, make it tangential but if it doesn't look okay like it should be inside right you have to put the ball inside so you click on anti-aligned now it goes inside nice and easy very good so now one ball wouldn't do you need at least 20 so you can multiple them multiply them uh, uh, that's the word by using component pattern but not linear you just click on this arrow here and choose circular component pattern and as the component you choose the ball as the axis to rotate you just choose any circular or cylindrical surface so there you go you need 20 you can just type 20 or you can just click here like me because it's more satisfying click OK now you have 20 of them but one last thing if you rotate the inner the lower bearing if you rotate it the balls wouldn't move it looks like weird so in order to fix that i have a cool trick go to mate we're gonna use the lock lock mate choose one of the balls your favorite ones doesn't matter right or left and then click on the inner part now what it does is it makes the position between these two in relation with each other always at all times fixed and the same so if you rotate the part every other ball move with it so save it under bearing and let's go back to our main assembly okay now that you know how the zero knowledge of assembly is we can move on to a little bit more advanced stuff which is uh, again 
under the category of beginner but it's a little bit more advanced so i would uh, start working with different type of mates under the advanced mates and show you how they can help you to assemble your parts easier because they're not there to give you some of them are there to give you more options that you couldn't have achieved with uh, the standard mates but some of them are just there to make your job easier so don't get overwhelmed with these options man these are your friends man chill out okay this is the example for the profile center what it does is it would put their center together so for example let i cannot put it into words let's just show you i have this circular surface over here and i have this rectangle rectangular surface over here i click on it and then you see what happens it just puts it exactly in the center of that um, rectangular surface and you have the option of moving it back and forth and maybe even rotating it depending on the situation and the geometry of the part that you're using but that's basically the profile center it's really practical if you have a situation a case like this where you have a circular surface or just a circular reference and a non-circular reference especially if you have a non-circular or really odd shape reference you can use this main now let's just go to the other one that would be the symmetric okay let's just show you how symmetric works when you're creating each and every part you're doing it in the part document not in the assembly even though you can okay so you have uh, three planes on each part uh, three standard ones that would be the top front and right plane right so you can use these parts you use these planes I'm, I'm sorry use these planes as very helpful references to place your part in the assembly let me show you you want this part to be exactly in the middle of the other one assuming it's a very odd shape and you cannot use the profile center or etc uh, or it doesn't make sense to use it you can go to mate and activate the advanced mate and go click on symmetric symmetric again is one of those options where it um, helps you to do something easier not necessarily it's a new option where you cannot achieve via the standard mates you can absolutely recreate symmetric option with uh, with the standard mates but you have to use like a couple of mates more so it just maybe it's just look at it like a shortcut so that would be for example the top plane of the part you can see that I'm gonna choose it now it requires two, two references from me I'm gonna choose this one and this one see what happens it puts the part exactly between these two references so yeah nothing more 